And now we're ready for the highlight of our trip, which is the coconut. Because you see coconuts right in front of the dive site. There you are. <laughs> and the reason why it's dangerous, because it's a corner dive. So remember, every time we do a corner dive, always prepare for a strong, strong current. And never do it on low tide. And we made sure, together with my dive master here, that it was going to high tide and there won't be any down current. And look at that. I'm sure Mr. Mike here who owns Mike Beach Resort. Uh, gave a briefing to all his dive masters never to dive without a briefing, huh? Well, Mike? Of course, that's one of the most important things that your guide's going to do is let you know where you're going, what it's going to look like, and how to get to the boat, and how to keep safe. And he knows how to speak English. Yes. <laughs> that's the most that's important. Especially when or you else have foreign you, can, guests. you yeah. can communicate just by sign language. And we are preparing uh, the joints right and we have to do it one by one this is not a good idea if, if there's really strong current right doing it one by one well it's hard to get a bigger group into the water but mm -hmm. if there's more than uh, a few you can hold on to the ropes right, right. But certainly if the skirt is strong enough then you would want to put a rope behind the boat so that the mm -hmm. divers could gather there and then uh, take off and go down together well, a piece of advice, if you're diving on a very, very strong current, okay, and you don't have a choice but to do a giant stride one by one, make sure everybody's geared up already. Yeah. Don't wait for somebody who's getting up for five minutes while you are against the current. Yeah, that's going to be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not joking. You know? some, some people are asshole. Yeah. They know that you jump already. Oh, they're still looking for their mask, preparing their regulator. Everybody should be geared up already. Well, and look at that, huh? The first diver should always wait until the last diver is geared up, though. You're right. Sometimes <laughs> people like to just jump off the boat uh -huh. yeah. and go the wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you notice, uh, the video is quite fast. I'm not actually thinning right now. It's actually the current that's pushing me. That's why the video is quite fast. And look at that. Huh? We're, tra we're probably traveling now, right now, maybe about two to three knots and uh, a few minutes from now we'll be traveling maybe four to five knots <laughs> yeah do you know how powerful uh, seven to eight knots is mike uh powerful enough to pull your mask off exactly yeah. yeah right you gotta hold on to your mask just yeah. like galapagos diving huh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah if you have a very bad mask you're gonna lose your mask yeah and apple island you can experience that type of currents occasionally at coconut there you go it's beginning to start now the drift dive and uh, we made sure that we had to certify these guys advance or else they cannot go diving in Mike's uh, beach resort. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. A drift dive, this dive is in particular is an advanced dive site and mm -hmm. should be experienced divers or divers with uh, close supervision of a professional. Exactly. That's why if you want uh, good diving, like most of the good diving are in liveaboards, you have to make sure you get your certification as an advanced diver. Okay, Mike, advanced diving is, what are the requirements now for advanced diving? One is current dive, and what else? Well, actually, a uh, drift dive is not required. It's oh. a, a deep dive and mm. a navigation dive. Those are the two required for a uh, PADI advanced open water certification. And that leaves you three optional dives, elective dives. So a drift dive is one that we would normally encourage the guests to take here. I see. So here in your resort, in Mike's Beach Resort in Dumaguete, uh, is it all uh, paddy here, or you other? Or you no, also we're, we're just we're a paddy uh, oh. dive center. So yeah. you love paddy so much. You make them rich, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, I should give you a plaque. Huh? <laughs> they gave me a plaque. <laughs> they gave you a plaque. You know, I have yeah. a friend uh, who, has, who hasn't been teaching, and he has a plaque that he's been paying for thirty-five years. Yeah, well, as, a paddy, as a paddy instructor. Yeah, a close and friend he's of not mine. Teaching. He's not teaching. I, yeah. I'm the one teaching the whole family. You know, yeah. it, look at like, the current here. Boy, yeah, right, that's right, right. now. Yeah, look at that. That's one way you can always see what the current's doing is watch the fish. You see how they're swimming up the slope, which would indicate that the current is pushing down a little bit there. Or they always, or watch the bubbles. Watch the bubbles as well. Yeah. <laughs> look at those look bubbles. At yeah. <laughs> look at yeah. those bubbles. Huh? But if they don't go straight. They go <laughs> sideways. But if you're in the front of the group and you're swimming along, if you watch what the fish are doing in front of you, that will tell you what the current's doing. The divers behind you can watch your bubbles. Uh -huh. But those little fish, 
That'll get indicate to you what the current's doing ahead. Yeah, well, here, accidentally, I turned on my camera, so the video is not good there. Uh, and like what I said, we still have to do some editing here. You know, you also get rattled with strong currents, you know, because you're going to shoot video and you're also watching the other people. Yeah, yeah. So you turned on your camera? No, oh, well, a while ago it was uh, turned accidentally. Yeah, okay. Now it's back to normal and we're seeing oh, the beautiful pyramid fish. Huh? The pyramid fish are part of the uh, family of butterfly fish, no? It looks Mike? like it, yes, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, when you do a drift dive, uh, you have what you call uh, um, adrenaline rush, huh? Always. <laughs> you know, your senses are really awake. Yeah, well, you never know what the current's going to be. Right? You, uh -huh. know, you can look at tides, you can look at uh, the full moon or no moon uh -huh. and try to make a guess, but Apple Island uh, doesn't really seem to follow the, the normal um, standards for currents. It uh -huh. can be very unpredictable. Uh, so you never know what you're getting. Every time you jump, you got to mm. be uh, on your toes. And look at her. She even wants to pose for my camera. Yeah, Said, look, good. look at me. I'm really diving on a strong current, you know. And that woman just... Uh, she's living now in Switzerland. Huh? Uh, I never knew that uh, Switzerland is just a very, very small country. Huh? Uh, landlocked, right? Mm -hmm. So lots of divers from Switzerland. I think the current started to uh, started to be slow, slower slowing here. Slowing down, huh? subsiding. Yeah, slowing, yeah. yeah, the fish are swimming normally. So, okay, uh, we're doing the highlight of uh, diving here. Look at those blue trigger fish. Huh? If there's a strong current, normally, uh, what would be your dive plan? If you just make it just short for me, uh, Mike. Well, of course, the most important thing is always staying together with your guide. Follow mm -hmm. the guide because he knows the currents and he'll, he'll know where, you know, if it's going to change directions, go up or down, he'll, he should know that in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, but stay together. Uh, stay close to the uh, bottom. Don't go off into the blue or... Um, and you know, just be prepared. You know, to to relax and enjoy it. Let the current take you. You don't want to fight it. Um, I yeah. want to stop you first. Yeah. Is this husband and wife? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two. Interracial uh, marriage. Uh, look at that, huh? Uh, yeah. Where's the woman and where's the man here? <laughs> well, that's a pretty common sight to see the two different varieties. Right. Of look at there. that, huh? Yeah. Very nice. You know, I felt so bad when I was in Thailand and I saw these people inside the aquarium, ready to yeah. be served. Uh, oh, in the restaurant. Oh, in the right? restaurant. Yeah. Would you, would you feel bad? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But you yeah. see, if you go to the market, you see the lobsters and, mm -hmm. the, and the fish waiting to be served. Even in Domaghetti, we have a, a great seafood restaurant. That, uh, yeah, but I believe the, uh, the lobsters are part of the pelagic fishes. You know, yeah. So. yeah. Look at that uh, big mouth there. Huh? I think yeah. uh, he's waiting for food huh, to well, come inside. Well, I think that's also part of how they, they need to breathe. They have to pump a lot of water through mm. the gills, huh? They're not moving. And look so at those sharp teeth, huh? No, very they sharp. do have sharp teeth, huh? Look at that, huh? that They can really bite you, huh? Oh, sure and they are uh, your uh, wetsuit apart. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to shoot him this way because he's, he was kind of shy to me. I want to shoot the front part. I, said, I want to see your front side. Turn around. <laughs> yeah, turn yeah. around, but uh, you know, he wouldn't do that. He's too shy, you know? But uh, I notice uh, foreign divers, when they see a lionfish, as if they, saw, they see gold. <laughs> yeah, they get excited. Yes. They get excited. Yeah, they're well, they're said, very beautiful. Uh -huh, yes. we, we have so much of them here. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I, it's, it's really amazing that a lot of tourists here who come all the way from Europe, you know, traveling 20 to 30 hours just to enjoy the Philippines. Well, the Philippines has some of the best diving in the world. It's in the, what they call the Coral Triangle, and it's got some of the... Uh, the most uh, mm -hmm. diversity in the world, right here. Well, the best way to say it, it's the center of marine biodiversity in yeah. the world. Yes. I don't know if that's true, but that's quoted by Mr. Carpenter, a guy from Cebu. Yeah. And according to him, uh, it's uh, based on the satellite. Yeah. Yeah, based on the satellite, yeah. Well, we know that there's a, a lot of life here, and it's a huge different uh, spectrum of you know variety. So you go to places like the Caribbean and California, you just don't see the variety you do here. Well, I, I wish uh, the Department of Tourism will uh, will see the advantage of uh, scuba diving as one of the biggest uh, income earner for yep. tourists. Huh? Yeah. Um, just like in Palau, you know, take out scuba diving, Palau is dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, the, I, you know, the Department of Tourism has been pretty active lately. They're very involved in uh, DEMA. Uh, mm -hmm. They send a huge uh, uh, group of Filipino dive shop owners, resorts, over to the United States to the, the largest dive show in the world. And they work hard to promote the Philippines as one of the top dive destinations. Yeah, but I still believe, Mike, for you to promote something, you've got to have a lot of passion. You've got to train these people from the Department of Tourism mm -hmm. to go scuba diving. So if the people in the uh, Department of Tourism are listening, are you willing to teach them for free, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> send, me, send me a couple. <laughs> send me a couple. And, bring, and you come with, right? We'll teach them together. Team yeah, teaching. as long as uh, they're willing to promote uh, Philippine tourism, I think uh, Mike will help you out. Sure. Because everything is all about the economy here. Huh? Well, and also as, you know, as a, a foreign-owned business, uh, we always work together to help uh, uh, make things more affordable for mm -hmm. local people. You know, you can't do it for everybody, but uh, certainly when uh, that snake, huh? when it's uh, somebody's interested and uh, unable to afford it on their own, you have to make some concessions. Mm -hmm. A while ago, I showed you again some leather back, and this time, this is the poisonous bonded sea snake. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This can really kill you, huh? In an instant, right? But, you know, I've seen some people trying to hold the tail of that snake. Yeah. And they I, don't bite. No, they, they don't bite. <laughs> if you hold their tail, huh? I've, well, I've seen people handle these snakes regularly. You really? can hold them, and they're very timid. They're not ah. aggressive at all. Uh, quite calm, actually. So, And they say the mouth is so small that it would be very difficult for it to get a purchase on your skin. I to, see. To, you know, to, to impregnate you with the... the the venom. You know, I wish I can film a blue ring octopus. Do you have Do you have blue ring octopus here? We do. Which are really very poisonous. They are. We do have some, and the dive site mm -hmm. uh, for blue ring octopus is right out here in front of our resort, and just a little bit to the south. Oh wow! Really? Uh, the corner down here uh, is the, the place that we go looking, and they're there. They're not uh, every dive, but uh, if you're looking for them, you might waste a dive or two. But uh, that's where you'll catch them. Okay, so don't forget, Mike Beach Resort, and. Uh, this Darwin is probably the capital of macro photography uh, in the Philippines or in the world. <laughs> that could be, yeah. yeah so. You know, before I went to um, Darwin, I thought it was in our place called Bonito Island for macro photography. Now I believe that uh, uh, Darwin is becoming an in thing for macro photographers. Huh? Yeah, it You've is. got a lot of small stuff here. Huh? Yeah, and the people come from all over the world just to see it. Why, why is it so, Mike? Is it because you started building artificial reef here and attracting this uh, species to uh, come in? Well, there are a few artificial reefs in the areas that they are, um, that's pop, you know, that are muck sites. And we had the pier, which now is closed to us, but mm -hmm. that was That was really bad. Huh? Yeah, but that was really uh, the best, yeah. But anywhere there's kind of a sandy gravel area and debris, it seems, it mm -hmm. uh, develops into a good muck site. And, and we're just blessed to have it here. I, I don't know exactly why it's there, but, uh, mm -hmm. but we're grateful it is. Okay, so we're back to the leatherback corals again, which we don't have in our place. And together with Nemo and Snapperfish uh, just going around um, this place called the Coconut. And look at those fish, huh? And look at those leatherback, oh wow, thousands and thousands of leatherback corals here. Oh, the guy you're listening to is the son of Mike, who wants to go scuba diving already. Papa, Papa, I want to go scuba diving, I want to get wet. Come on, Papa. He won't take the diving tomorrow. Right, right, right. Just like my son, he's going to cry if you don't let him go diving. And there, Mike has to uh, talk to the sun. Okay. Don't worry, you're gonna go scuba diving, you're gonna get wet someday. And we're ending the dive here in Coconut as one of the highlights of scuba diving in Apo Island. So make sure you get your advanced certification card or else they'll never give you a tank. <laughs> and you're gonna miss a lot because <laughs> you've You've not seen coconut. <laughs> You've, that's the must-do dive of Apple Island. Coconut. Right, right. So that's why uh, we did our best to uh, to convince the dive masters that we were with advanced people. So let's go to coconut dive site. And beautiful conditions for it. You know, it makes it much easier when the surface is calm for your entries right. and exits. So thank you again, Mike Beach Resort here in Dumaguete.